So this little Keurig machine only has one light. When you press that, it starts to brew and the red light flashes. The boiler comes on and when it gets up to temperature, it should open the valve and pump. So even though there's no display, there's still a number of different functions that can be accessed to improve um, the excitement of this uh, machine. So at least the machine works. That's a good start. This machine was $8 at the Goodwill. So let's take a look. Very basic machine. K cup goes here, water goes here, little filter. That's the boiler right there. The top side, um, a couple screws here. So we could get access for electrical to put something on the top here. So let's take a look inside. Let's see if the housing comes off easily. So let's take off these Torx screws here. Well, we got a moth. That's interesting. Oh, there goes the moth. All right, so let's see what we've got <clears throat> looking in here. It's nice that we do have direct access to the um, to the light functions of the switch. Uh, the main board is right here too, uh, with access to 120 volts. Uh, what else do we have access to readily? Um, motor. So this red and black uh, right here seems to go to the pump. That's good. We can access that. Um, and this red here looks like it's going to the boiler. <clears throat> so we can access the pump, the boiler, and the switch and the switch light right there. So three different things we can access already. So next, is there anything exciting to expose here, uh, like the boiler? Um, yeah, well, the boiler is way up here, top four inches here. So if we're going to expose something for the boiler, it's going to be up in here. Here's some plumbing. There's some nice plumbing pipes there. Might be neat to have a look inside there with a peephole somehow. So there and somewhere up here. So what external features do we want to put on here is the next question. What do we see this looking like? So what about a big valve knob? That could go somewhere, or maybe is that better on the side? I think my boiler thermometer is too big for this model. I could mount it like right here. But this machine doesn't look like it's going to be steampunk. It looks more like it's going to have to be post-apocalyptic Star Wars or something. So let's put that aside for now. Um, vacuum tube feature. Probably too big. Definitely not going to be on the side. Could do a steam whistle. Again, I just don't see this being steampunk. Okay, so I've soldered on a uh, temporary test lead to the motor leads to verify that they produce 12 volts when it starts pumping. So let's try that now. So we've got 12 volts while it's pumping. And when it shuts off pumping, it should go back to zero, which will be perfect. Perfect, zero volts. All right. So this is the wire ribbon that goes to the switch. <clears throat> I'm going to strip the one with the dashes on here a little bit 
hoping that that's the blinking light. That would make sense. We'll see if that's true. So I've got the meter's ground attached to the same ground as before. And we'll probe with the positive here. And we'll see what our voltmeter says. This is the blink wire. We'll see if that's the correct wire. We'll hit the switch. Oh, right now it's already saying 7 volts. That's not a good sign. We'll try this next one. <clears> hmm. <throat> Minus 7 volts also. And here we've got minus 12 volts. All of these have voltage when the switch is off. Hmm. Okay, well, I've popped the switch out here. <clears throat> it looks like all the control of the LED happens on the board. Let's see if there's anything accessible on there related to that light. Okay. So, if I can carefully solder onto both sides of the LED, I could draw power from there. Looks like about 2 volts we're getting. So we could tap in there. Okay. So I have successfully attached the wires to the both side to both sides of the LED. <clears throat> Still works. Let's check for voltages here. Perfect. Now let's see if we can put it back together. Make a little pass through for the wire. Okay, success. So now we have three different functions we can, can, can tap into. The blinking light of the power switch, the boiler, and the pump. I think we should reveal some of the boiler and put a light back there as part of it. All right, so we'll put a hole here. Uh, and I like to use for this, I think, the diamond wheel on the Dremel. This is my Harbor Freight Dremel. I've been very happy with it. Well, we got some pipes. We got a boiler. It doesn't look very exciting, but we can paint it metallic, make it look better. Maybe some other kind of exposure here might be cool. Still not the most exciting unit, but we'll deal with it. There's a cord storage area here where we can make a real hidden scene in here of some sort. It'd be, I think we can make something interesting there. I want the cord to stay out so I can use that space in here. So I'm going to put a tension relief and cover up this hole here. Um, I like this little greeble. Um, I need to bend it. So I'm going to heat it up a little bit. When you're heating up PLA, you heat it for a while, and then it suddenly gets to a point where it's ready to bend. And it gets really soft really quickly at that point. And now I'm just gonna crazy glue it in place. I buy the economy size crazy glue. It's 
brand, some brand of accelerator. I've been kind of enjoying these rivet strips that I made. I think I might put one on here just for texture. Again, I heat those up as needed to bend them. Get another one going here. It's going to be an issue getting around the switch, but so those are my cutouts. So when this gets painted, of course, it's going to look better. You don't have to worry too much about detail. So I'm making like a little stage in there where I'll mount some droids. I put a little silver on the boiler and uh, it's going to get a little bit of very dry black on here. Dirty it up a bit. Push a little bit into the corner. It always looks good. Corners are always grimy. And then it never hurts to reverse highlight the edges. I've got some aluminum ducting tape I'm going to use inside of here to reflect some light outward. I think that'll be a a good move. So that'll be good. We'll pass a wire through there. I've got a lot of servo extension wires from my more active RC days. They're just sitting around, so we can put them to use. And we'll just replace our temporary red and black wires with these um, that we identified. This is from the pump. Okay, and then we'll just cover cover up those splices, and we'll be good. So that's going to be 12 volts. Now your standard LED is going to be pretty unhappy with that, um, so you have to use a resistor. I bought these 12 volt LEDs already made up on eBay. They've got a resistor wired in already, um, so that's good. I've got red and green right now. You can peel off some of the crazy glue if you make a little mistake and smear it. It comes right off pretty easily. So that's going to be the LED ready light. And it's going to be any low voltage. And what color do I want? 
maybe blue. I got these bottle lights for four bucks. And uh, look at that. And you can just cut these off and use them one at a time, whatever you want to do, uh, with you know three to five volts. One thing that is true about these, you really have to sand the leads really well if you're going to try and um, solder to them. It's really hard. So we're going to clean those really good. So I've taken the wire from the switch light over here, and um, I'm just going to extend it now. I soldered on a longer lead so we can pass it on up the back of the machine to where we want it. It's just long enough. I'm going to take this up through here, right here, make a little tiny hole here, and we'll figure something out to cover it up. I'm going to pass the wire around the edge, and I'm going to make a little hole and come through here, and we'll figure out some kind of uh, coating to pass that on up. Perfect. So what we can do now is we can just uh, tack this here, dump some hot glue on it, burn my fingers nicely. And just kind of push that up to the side. It wasn't nearly as painful as I thought it would be. All right, so what are we going to cover that with? I need some tubing or something that would look cool. Let me think about it. Ah, about these straws. I wonder if that's going to work for that. Hmm. Oh, that could work perfectly. Oh. Oh. So let's uh, stick this on now and the grill. I'm not going to put the grill on there yet until after I paint around here so I can put some masking tape over the LEDs. So we'll do that later. I'm going to take my power supply and check the uh, polarity of these wires. That looks good. So, red on right here. All right. And... Okay, I think that's going to look pretty good. So we've got our down light when we're pumping. We've got our ready light and now we just need our 12 volt converter. We need our bucks converter to get 12 volts off the boiler. Um, to light up the boiler area and to light up the special droid stage down here. For the droid area, I think I'll use two, well, I guess they come in threes, uh, three um, 12 volt white tape lights. And we'll just mount those on the, on the ceiling under here. After we put our wires on it, that'll be really easy. So we've got our leads attached. Yeah, you can mount it under there. So that's stuck on there pretty good. With the self-adhesive tape, I'm going to put a little hot glue just to make sure it doesn't come off. And I'll put a piece of trim in front of here. A little facing piece so you don't see those. I think we want one up in here. So maybe I can nestle it up in here with some hot glue. And we're going to want one up in here. It'll come down like that. So this is a little tiny bucks converter. It takes 120 volts in on one side and puts out 12 volts DC on the other. So we're going to run that off the boiler to run those lights when the boiler comes on. 
Okay, so now we've got all of the lights hooked up to the bucks converter, and now we have to, on this side here, we'll attach the 120 that's coming from the boiler. It's just going to cover up everything sticking out on the bucks converter so it doesn't get shorted out unintentionally. And we're going to hot glue that mess back in the corner here, and that'll be good. And then we're going to attach the other end of the wires to the boiler wire and ground as we identified earlier. Okay, so we have our 120 volts and we'll wrap those up real good. And then we're going to try it out, see if everything works as planned. Let's turn the light on. And our ready light. That's weird. The boiler is coming on. The boiler goes off. Our ready light is not on. Okay, we're not getting three volts. Okay, I had the wires reversed, <clears throat> so now we have the green down light pretty nicely there while it's pumping out the coffee. This is my little BB-8 droid. I'm going to save the raft that's going to make a nice greeble and I'm probably going to use it right now. Just some surface texturing here. It's going to make it look good. I'm going to leave this. Uh, no, actually I'll put my, uh, well, I'll put a logo here maybe. This gear could work for some kind of symbol here. I don't know. I still like this pump wheel. I like this little condenser thing. That might be good right there. Got this little right angle pipe. It might be just what I was thinking of to come off of this tank. Fill in that space. The light's going to be coming down on there could work. We'll try it. What if we put a little line of rivets around here? I have a special technique for that. I use Google Eyes. Hot glued on.
I like it. I like it. Okay. I think that's enough. So let's give it a coat of paint. Let's. We're gonna block off this area here so we don't get any paints in our droid stage, and I have to protect those LEDs and stuff with a little bit of tape. I started to work on my droids. They're pretty rough shape, but it's not really going to matter, I don't think. While I was waiting for the uh, spray paint to dry. So it's starting to look like something. I missed some paint here. Um, <clears throat> but it really does even it out a whole lot by putting on a base coat. I like to bring in some Yoda green here with a fairly dry brush. It's coming in from one angle basically. Not too heavy. So yeah, it's just, uh, you know, like happy little trees kind of stuff. So maybe these pipes are leaking a bit. Maybe we can put some brown here for some corrosion. not brown enough. I'm going to pile up the paint here a little higher. I think that'll give us some look of dripping. A little white sometimes picks up some highlights coming in one direction. It just kind of brings out the details a little bit. Okay, I was only able to fit three droids into my little droid stage here. So I've got a little Gronk droid, R2-D2, and my armless C-3PO back there. And now a healthy coat of matte uh, acrylic clear coat is drying.
turn it up. Boiler lights have turned off now. And that's the end of the cycle. I hope you've enjoyed watching this kit bash and I hope you'll try it yourself. Thank you.